Our brains are incredible, and we're always learning new things about how they work and what affects them. But there are some everyday things you probably do all the time that can physically change your brain, and you likely weren't even aware of them. Today we're showing you 10 things that physically change your brain. Learning is excellent for the brain, and a great way to do that is to watch the Hub's videos. So before we start, click the red subscribe button below. Not sleeping. You might notice you struggle to remember things when you're tired. If you wake up after a rough night's sleep and struggle to remember what you got up to yesterday, you can blame your brain. While you sleep, your brain strengthens the neural connections you've made during the day and then streamlines the ones you need to keep. Without sleeping, this isn't possible. But memory isn't the only thing affected in your brain if you don't get your 8 hours of sleep a night. It can actually result in diseases like Alzheimer's. One of the most illuminating discoveries made recently is that the brain clears out toxins while we sleep at a much faster rate than when we're awake. It's thought that the lymphatic system of the brain awakens at night and does its best to keep everything in check. The space between brain cells expands significantly during sleep, which facilitates the clearing of the bits we don't need through cerebrospinal fluid. These proteins and other toxins seem to accumulate during the day and are cleared during sleep. The brain is also affected when it comes to creativity and physical health if we're sleep deprived. Does anyone fancy a nap yet? Music. Listen up here because putting music on in the background of activities changes your brain and in an excellent way too. Using music while practicing a physical task, like learning a yoga position, can drastically help your development. Recent studies have shown that those who practiced a move while music was playing showed an increased structural connectivity between the two regions of the brain that process sound and control movement. Essentially, parts of the brain light up. Not only can it help with learning different exercise moves, but there's a hope that one day it can be used for motor rehabilitation programs for people who've suffered strokes. Scientists aren't truly sure how the connection works, but it's no medical secret that music usually encourages people to move somehow. And it looks like music encourages the brain to move in other ways too, because it's not just older people or those who've had an accident that can benefit from listening to music to encourage brain productivity. A study from the University of Washington found that babies who listened to songs had sharper music and speech regions than those who didn't. This is thought to make it easier for babies to learn how to talk and to eventually learn foreign languages too. Chronic Pain While everyone experiences some pain every so often, people who suffer from chronic pain can actually find it affects their brain long term, especially those whose chronic pain isn't properly diagnosed or dealt with. People who suffer from these ailments can become irritable, short-tempered, and impatient, and all for very good reason. Having perpetually no energy and wondering when the next spike of pain will hit is not something anyone wants to live with. Recent studies have shown that chronic pain can actually affect the chemistry and wiring of the nervous system. People who suffer from a long-term chronic illness can find their cells in their spinal cord and their brain can deteriorate faster than normal, leading to depression-like symptoms. They can also find it harder to process multiple things at once and to cope with a fast-changing environment. Chronic pain also teaches the brain to expect frequent bouts of pain, putting it permanently on edge. Problems don't even end here. People with chronic pain often struggle to sleep, meaning they can end up suffering all of the sleep-related brain changes we've already covered. Roughly one-third of patients with chronic pain develop some of these problems, like depression, at some point during their lifetime. Smoking Cigarettes Everybody knows that smoking is bad for you and can cause a whole host of different health issues but you might not have realized that cigarettes can physically alter elements of the brain. Similar to some illegal drugs, smoking cigarettes releases the feel-good chemical dopamine, which leads to addiction. This is exactly why so many smokers have trouble kicking the habit, even though they're fully aware of the health implications and the dangers they're actively putting themselves through. The brain reacts to cigarettes through a production of chemicals called opioids. These play a role in increasing positive emotions, soothing pain, and creating a sense of reward. Both morphine, a drug used for intense pain relief, and the illegal drug heroin trigger the same chemical reaction. Previous studies have looked at the connection between smoking cigarettes and altering the brain. And by studying non-smokers' brains, scientists have found a clear cause and effect hypothesis for the addiction. One leading researcher, David J. Scott, found that smokers have an altered opioid flow all of the time, compared with non-smokers, who only access this movement when they're doing something they really enjoy, which triggers the same response. Smoking cigarettes was found to increase the flow by a whole 20 to 30% in various regions of the brain. Caffeine. If you drink coffee or a lot of energy drinks, you'll be no stranger to the buzz that comes shortly after. But it's not the actual drink that's waking you up, but the caffeine inside it. It's the caffeine that can physically alter your brain by doing so. Let's explain. All the time you're awake, your brain is firing neurons to keep your body in check. As a byproduct of these neurons, adenosine is produced. 
But this doesn't just go about its merry way around your body, because your nervous system will actively listen to the adenosine and will adjust accordingly through your receptors. When your adenosine levels reach a certain point, your body will take the signal to either fall asleep or to at least relax. But this is where caffeine changes it all up. Caffeine charges towards your adenosine receptors and will trick your body into thinking it's one of them. As a result, your body accepts the caffeine instead and won't trigger the same response to slow down. What a lot of people get confused over is the fact that caffeine doesn't actually press the gas on speeding your body up, it gets rid of the option to slow it down by pressing the brake. Exercise. There are plenty of reasons to get regular exercise, ranging from meeting new people to learning a skill or improving your health. But aside from improving your physical health, exercise is also a great way to make sure your brain is healthy. And it'll even change your brain in great ways too, if you keep up the hard work long term. A study at the University of British Columbia found that regular exercise, the type that builds up sweat and keeps your heart pumping, was great at improving verbal memory and learning. This part of the brain is called the hippocampus. One downside of the study was that the researchers found resistance training or balance and muscle toning exercises sadly didn't reap the same benefits. But exercise in general also helps in other ways. It wakes up the chemicals in the brain that affect the health of brain cells, the growth of new blood vessels in the brain, and even the abundance and survival of new brain cells. It also indirectly improves mood and sleep and reduces anxiety and stress. Even though these don't have a direct correlation to changing your brain, they certainly go a long way to keeping your body in good health, which contributes to good brain health. Those who take part in regular exercise programs for six months to a year seem to also have an increase in the volume of selected brain regions. Reading. Everybody loves reading. And if you don't enjoy reading, it's probably because you haven't found your genre of choice yet. So take a trip down to your local library because not only does reading take you to different worlds unlike anything you've seen before, but it also changes your brain in very exciting ways. Scientists have proven in the past that reading stimulates many different areas of the brain. While it teaches us new words and meanings that we didn't know before, it also forms connections with other senses in our body. For example, one 2006 study found people who read frequently would react in the sense of smell area of the brain when they heard the word perfume or coffee. It is thought that reading a lot can improve the neural connections between different areas and can have a long-term effect on a person's health. Reading can also trick the brain in magical ways. For example, a study focused on a book about swimming found that those who took part would then see movement in the areas of the brain connected with physical swimming too. It seems that even if you can't physically move into the worlds your favorite books describe, your brain can do the next best thing and take you there in your head. Meditating. You might think meditating is nothing more than a bit of sitting still and chanting some words. If you're in this category, you might not be aware of all the ways meditation can actually physically change your brain and improve your lifestyle. A study conducted by UCLA found that people who meditated for a long period of time had better preserved brains than their non-meditating counterparts. Those who'd taken the time out of their day to meditate had more gray matter volume throughout the brain. Although older meditators still had some volume loss compared to younger meditators, it wasn't as pronounced as the non-meditators. The researchers in charge of the study had expected to see a small difference, sure, but they weren't prepared to see such a huge and obvious difference from something that many people consider a waste of time. Unsurprisingly, meditating also slows the brain down, but in a good way. Usually when our minds wander, we start to worry, whether it's about money or our circumstances or a conversation we had the other day. People who meditate found their brains were less likely to wander in this matter, leaving them happier and more at peace than everyone else. Gaining body fat. There are many problems associated with gaining too much weight, but you might not have thought the detrimental effect could spread to your brain and how it functions. But new studies have found that not only can an overly heavy body slow down the physical movements, but also the psychological movements. There are a few direct correlations here. The first is that obese men and women are estimated to be about 35% more likely to develop Alzheimer's compared to people of a normal weight. Although there's no 100% certain reason why, there's one thought process that works. Insulin resistance has become linked to neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's because insulin resistance is associated with an increase in fatty acids, inflammation, and oxidative stress. Research has found that the body increases the amount of proteins in the brain that trigger events that can predispose someone to the disease. Another study suggests fat cells release a substance called interleukin-1, which increases inflammation in the brain and, as a result, makes it less able to function on top form. A further study looked at 17 obese women and found their brains metabolize sugar faster than women of a normal weight. These women then performed at a slower pace in cognitive function tests, but the good news is that the effects can be reversed through weight loss. Multitasking. Being able to focus on many things at once can be great if you lead a busy lifestyle, 
but it could be causing some long-term damage on your brain. Now that's one thing we wish we could stop happening, but it might require cutting back on different things in order to make it happen. A study looked at the difference in brain behavior between people who focused on a singular task compared to those who focused on many tasks at once. The scientists found something shocking. A region of the brain called the anterior cingulate cortex, which is associated with attention, was smaller in the heavy multitaskers. The research into the difference in brain behavior is quite recent, meaning that we still don't know just how beneficial or detrimental it could be to work on different projects at once. But this much is clear. It can affect your ability to pay attention. The work so far has centered on the nature of neuroplasticity, which shows that our brains change with our behavior. Concentrating on one thing at once, like reading a book or meditating, led to a brain with a better ability to concentrate. We hope you're just as fascinated by the capabilities of the human brain as we are after watching this video. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.